I have a question to ask. Did you have a happy childhood? Can you remember the eagerness you felt when you woke up for the morning of your birthday, knowing that a whole selection of presents are going to be waiting for you? Okay, but let me ask you another question. Do you remember what presents you got, say, for your seventh birthday? Thinking hard? You don't? Why not? They were the world to you then. Anyway, here's a reason, maybe why, that the things which gave you a real boost of happiness at the age of seven were fleeting pleasantness that quickly faded with time. And psychologists have worked out how long material objects keep us happy. Interestingly, it's only six to 12 weeks. So you can go to a jewelry shop, pour out your life savings, buy something like this one over here, but in less than three months, the happiness will fade and move on to something like that one. It's the same when you buy a new car, the latest iPhone or a bigger house. The happiness we derive from the enjoyment of acquiring something new. And because new things become old, the associated happiness quickly fades. Why is it like that? Because as you know, that's the nature of all material things. They're temporary. So the pleasure associated with them, that's also temporary. It's only a shadow of happiness. But we're spiritual beings. We're eternal. And happiness is an intrinsic quality of who we are. As Aristotle said, happiness is not a function of one's material circumstances. Happiness is a quality of the soul. Therefore, real happiness is distinct from the futile chase after shadows. But if we connect with ourselves, our inner spiritual identity, then we will discover that happiness which doesn't fade, but rather which always increases. How to find that kind of happiness? Well, one thing for sure, it won't be by going to a silent meditation retreat and then telling the whole world on Facebook. But it will be by investing our energies in following eternal truths such as those taught by the Bhagavad Gita, which is the original and most authentic book on yoga. And there we will find recommendations on mantra meditation and kirtan, hearing narrations of wonderful avatars, and keeping company of spiritual friends. By these activities, we rediscover our spiritual identity and become submerged in the joys that are eternal birthright. Happiness is our very nature, but it has to be awakened by the right kind of gifts, spiritual gifts. So the choice is yours. Spend your life chasing shadows or trade in three months of happiness for everlasting bliss.